a recent graduate of Delta High School and now a freshman at the University of Denver. Sydney, I keep saying your name Cindy, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sydney earned the attention of the secular community after calling attention to proselytizing and other injustices at her public high school. Reprimanded for her actions, she was denied scholarship opportunities and suffered a 30% penalty to her grades. She has protested faith-based abstinence-only programs, supported the distribution of secular literature, and brought many separation of church and state issues to the attention of the Western Colorado Atheist and Freethinkers and the Freedom from Religion Foundation. Let's give her a warm hand. We will also have questions. Thank you so much for that introduction. And I just want to say a quick thank you to David and Susan and everyone who helped get me here. I'm really excited to be here. And um, my parents live in Colorado, and they wanted me to call them so they could hear my speech. So I'm going to do that super quickly. Sorry. <laughs> my mom is a bit of a hovercraft mom. <laughs> Hopefully she answers. <laughs> Hi, I'm speaking. Are you ready? <laughs> OK, here we go. <laughs> OK, so you heard a, a bit about my story, but I'm, I'm here and I want to present the full thing. So I'm Sydney. Um, I grew up in western Colorado, and I always joke that if you go west of the Continental Divide, you're basically in Utah politically. Um, it's not a, as, as liberal as Denver. Um, so I grew up in a conservative community. I went to Delta High School, and um, I was probably an atheist around the age of 14, but I didn't start getting involved until my junior year of high school. So it all started uh, in Hall on Halloween of 2014. And in 2014, there was a ballot, or a ballot measure, um, a personhood amendment that would essentially make abortion illegal. And we were allowed to dress up in Halloween costumes, so I wore a trash bag uh, that said Amendment 67 on it, uh, vote no. And all day I walked around and not a lot of people were sure what it meant, but I had one teacher in particular who did, and told me that I should take the costume off because God made babies and abortion is murder. So that was obviously very discouraging, and that same teacher was my student government teacher. And in my student government class, I had criticized the school for their allocations of funds, for the way they were directing things, for their administration. And um, eventually, I posted something on social media about my displeasure with the high school, and uh, I got called into my counseling office where my counselors told me they would hate to see me lose letters of recommendation and leadership positions in my extracurriculars. Um, at that point, it was well known that I, that I was an atheist and that I was liberal. Um, so obviously, I felt there was a tie. But the, the fact of the matter is they were limiting my First Amendment rights. So I went on the rest of the year terrified of the counseling office. Um, and the next year began in October. They invited a woman named Shelley Donahue. And if you've ever seen John Oliver, he does a little bit on her. Um, she's an abstinence-only, faith-based sex educator. I don't really think it's education. Um, and she came to Delta County, and she came to my high school, and she was paid something like two to $3,000 by a crisis pregnancy resource center in my town to speak. Um, she said awful, demeaning things about women, compared vaginas to Hoover vacuums, saying they would just suck up sperm. It was ridiculous. Uh, she said having sex would bring you further from God, and that if you didn't have a father figure in your life, you were more likely to have daddy issues. And she had crucifixes on every single slide. So preemptively to this, I watched her videos. I made t-shirts, my friends and I, that said, I abstain from ideology, real control is birth control, um, and things like that. I, I went to my superintendent the day before that when she was giving a speech, and I had asked her, or my mother was on the phone, hi mom, had asked her why she would say such demeaning things about women, and she denied what she had plainly said on video. So the next day, um, she, they separated the genders. I was lucky enough to get a journalism pass to go to both assemblies where I recorded everything um, and questioned her at the end. And so I thought maybe after I stirred this up a little bit, stirred the pot, that these things would end, but they unfortunately did not. Um, in the spring, they invited Chad Williams, the seal of God, to come speak to my student government class about drugs. And I wondered what this ex-military man who had prophetized children in 
California public schools had to say about marijuana. So when he called for questions in the most polite and respectful way possible, I asked him what his criterion was to speak to us, and he gave me a fair answer. Um, and this will come up later in the story. Um, but this really all came to fruition, a boiling point, when it was exposed that the middle school in Delta had been illegally distributing Gideon Bibles, doing it during class hours, asking children to take them, um, that the Western Colorado Atheists, the Freedom From Religion Foundation, and the Satanic Temple got involved and um, asked to distribute literature in my school. Now, I was openly behind this, and so a local newspaper in Grand Junction reached out to me and asked me to do an interview about it, and I was in support of it. And the next day, um, the newspaper came out, and the headline said, The Delta Schools Gives the Devil His Due, with my face right there. <laughs> I don't think the Sentinel was trying to paint me as the devil, but there I was, the devil herself. So after that, um, they were about ready to come into the schools, and we received death threats. The Western Colorado atheists, all atheists received death threats. And my dad was scared for my life. Hi, dad. Um, so he went, he went to the police and he filed a report. And actually, um, the secretary in the police department said that, uh, that what I was doing was wrong and that religion should be in schools. And no further action was taken by my administration or by the Delta County Police Department to do anything about the death threats I and the Western Colorado atheist and freethinkers had received. So the day came and the literature distribution surprisingly went over well. No one was dead, thank God. Actually, n no, because he's not real. Um, <laughs> whoops. Um, <laughs> so um, the next day, after the Sentinel had come out, I received a 30% doc of my student government grade. I, was, I knew immediately um, why. So as soon as I got back from spring break, after sending thousands of emails to this teacher. I had, I had a meeting with him and my principal where they sat me down and they tried to really beat around the bush and finally I asked them, why did you dock my grade? And they said, we assure you it's not about the article in the paper, but we really need you to stop talking. <laughs> we really need you to pipe down. You're too negative. We don't like your criticisms. So I asked, and I was recording this. I had learned with my encounters uh, with the corrupted faculty that I should record everything they say. So I asked exactly why they thought that, and they noted my criticisms of Chad Williams, that I shouldn't question authority, that I shouldn't question anyone. And then I asked how I could bring my grade back up, because obviously I was concerned. And they told me to shut up. They told me to fake it until I make it. So at that point, I was fed up. And I told my parents, and my parents contacted the Freedom From Religion Foundation, they contacted the American Civil Liberties Union, and the Western Crowd Atheists and Freethinkers. So I was obviously very troubled, and upon graduation, uh, it was the biggest relief. Um, until Ann Landman, the president of the Western Crowd Atheists and Freethinkers, asked me if I wanted to do an interview where I could name names and say what I really felt since I had graduated, and they no longer had a, the school no longer had a stake in my future. So I agreed. And um, a few days later, the blog post got something like 15,000 views and 1,000 shares. And the next thing I knew, my peers were tweeting and Facebook messaging and saying all these hateful things about me on social media. And it was terrifying. People in that town knew where I lived. People in that town knew my family. And I, I was discouraged. I was sad. It made my summer very rough. So finally, um, I got contacted by The Humanist, the magazine. I did an interview with them, the American Humanist Association, the um, Center Against Censorship. And I started doing all these interviews, even with like local affiliates. And things started to feel a little better. I started to see that I had support um, from my secular community, even though I thought they didn't exist. And soon enough, um, I found out that I hadn't received local scholarships and full ride scholarships uh, due to what I had said and due to my activism and due to the threats that the counselors have made. So there I was going to a $62,000 a year school um, with not that much money and coming from a conservative area and a low income family where my dad faced disabilities from working in a coal mine, I was concerned. And so my secular community reached out and um, People sent in donations to the Western Colorado and atheists and free thinkers on my behalf to create a scholarship fund for me. I was so grateful. I remember um, every time I would get an email updating me about the PayPal account, I would, I'd almost cry. 
I got donations from Australia, Sweden, the UK. And so I sat down with my mom one day and we wrote something like 90 thank you cards um, with personalized messages and sent them all out. So it, it, was, it was horrible what happened to me. The school was doing so many unjust things. Not only were they inviting those speakers in, but they had a Christian fellowship club meeting during class hours. They had teachers talking about religion openly with students, not in an objective manner. There were so many violations of the separation of church and state coming up that it, it was honestly to me an atrocity. And so I want to talk a little bit about what I learned from that experience and what I've learned from being here this weekend. I'm convinced that the people at my school, my peers, the faculty members didn't do what they did out of malice, rather out of ignorance. They weren't trying to hurt me. They felt like they were hurt by me, which is an unfair assumption to make, but I learned something about people. And I learned something about religion. And I also learned something about atheism and the secular movement, that I don't think we should be militant. And I don't think we should proselytize, because that's ex the, one of the exact reasons why I no longer wanted to be a part of any faith-based community. And although I think it's important to recruit people to our movement and to our groups and to our meetings, I don't think it's fair to pass judgment on them for being evil people when they may simply just be ignorant. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Additionally, I, I figured out that in the end I wasn't a victim. The entire time I was going through this, I felt like the whole world was against me and that this was the end all be all and that I would be the victim, a victim for the rest of my life because I didn't believe in God. And sadly, that's how a big portion of our community feels. But I think it's time we stop feeling that way. I'm not denying that people in power and people part of faith-based organizations do victimize us. I'm just saying we should fight back. For several years of attending public schools where proselytizing was going on all the way from the sixth grade up to the twelfth grade, I said nothing. And finally, when I decided that it was time for me to speak up and that I really earned the courage to do so, I learned that I wasn't a victim. I was an advocate. I learned that them stepping on me, them trying to limit me, gave me a voice. Although I faced some harsh repercussions, I created real change. I helped other secular students who otherwise wouldn't come out, come out. I helped them realize that they weren't alone, and I actually created real change in my school district. The entire reason the Gideons were allowed to distribute literature, and the reasons that the Satanists were too, is that we had an open book policy, is what they called it, where any religious institution could come distribute literature if they did so equally. And the Freedom From Religion Foundation had suggested that they eliminate that. And they had written letters. But after I, I got this in the media, and after I started taking legal action, they changed their policy. So in Delta County, no group that's affiliated with any sort of theology, religion, or anything can distribute literature in the schools. Um, the Freedom From Religion Foundation, with my help, also wrote a letter to the schools in any school that ever thought about hiring Shelley Donahue to speak to not. So I think that as a group of intelligent, enlightened people, instead of feeling bad for ourselves, we need to take action. We need to no longer just sit around and talk about how bad it feels and how stupid we think religious people are, even if we may feel that way and it may be true. We need to do something about it. And uh, I feel extremely supported to be here and, and to be among people like me because growing up in that conservative area, uh, it felt like there was not one person by my side. And having that 70% on my transcript scared the hell out of me because um, the University of Denver probably wasn't happy to see that. But I moved. Um, I'm working on the fellowship um, for the Hillary Clinton campaign. I'm going to see Bernie Sanders tomorrow to talk about Amendment 69, which is a single-payer health care um, <laughs> measure in Colorado. And because I, I'm truly convinced, I'm actually happy that the school did all that shit to me. Excuse my language. I'm really happy they did that. Because in no other way, shape, or form would I have the opportunities I have now. Because I was different from my community, because my community fought against me, I was able to fight back and send a clear message. And if you Google my name, I pop up in like 80 places, so I'm 
halfway famous, which is kind of cool, not to toot my own horn. Um, <laughs> so I actually want to give a big thank you to Delta High School for being horrible <laughs> and for being deplorable members of society. You helped me get where I am today. Thank you. <laughs> But just remember um, to be kind to, to religious people, um, to not try to change them. We want them to be genuine in their faith, even if they're not. It's, it's really not anybody's job to tell them what they can and can't believe because it's not their job to tell us what we can and can't believe. And that's the message I got from it, and that we shouldn't be victims. And do I have any time left for questions? I talked forever. So if you have any questions, um, I'll be hanging out for just a little bit, and then I have to fly back to Colorado. So thank you guys so much. And, uh, you know, here at Free Thought Day, we do like to support those who are part of our community and are doing an exemplary job spreading that secular pride. And Cindy, we are proud to give you a $200 check towards your tuition. Thank you. Thank you.